Welcome back to part four of our video tutorial series where we're learning to make a catch a game using Pi Game Zero. If we have a look at what we did in the previous three videos, we've got a little pirate ship that moves around collecting coins. We get one point added to our score each time we collect the coin, and the more coins we collect, the faster the coins start falling from the sky. What we're going to be doing in this video is getting the bomb and the skull that you can see at the top working as well. Okay, so let's get started on those. We're going to go to the update function um, in our code, and we're going to go below the ship section, which we coded up in the previous video. Okay, so underneath all of that, let's add in a big comment that says skull. All right, what we're going to do is get this um, skull code working. So we're going to get the skull basically falling down from the sky, much like the coin. So... First of all, put in a comment that says move the skull down the page. And we'll just do skull.y equals skull.y plus four. Oops. So that gets the um, skull moving down the page at speed four. Now, you should know by now there is a better way to write this line of code. It is skull.y plus equals four. So let's just fix that to make it look a little bit nicer. So skull.y plus equals 4. Give it a play and you'll see your skull fall down the page. A bit like what we did with the coin in the previous video, it's just going to fall forever unless we tell it to loop itself back around to the top of the screen and then start falling from a random location again. Okay, so let's put a comment that just says reset the skull at the top of the page once it hits the bottom. Okay, now the code for this is going to be quite similar to um, what we had up here with the coin. It's just going to be another if statement. So if our skull.y is greater than 600, so it means it's hit the bottom of the page. Uh, what do we want it to do? Well, we want skull.x to be equal to random dot Brand int anywhere between 20 and 780. And the skull dot y will be equal to zero. So basically, once the skull hits the bottom of the page, it will loop back around and it will fall from a random location on the x-axis between those two um, coordinates. And it will be the top of the page because that's what the skull dot y equals zero will, uh, is saying. Um, once we are there, we should be all good. So let's give it a test run to make sure the skull loops itself back around once it hits the bottom of the page. Looks like it is. And it looks like it's appearing in random locations. So that's good. What we're going to do now is um, what happens when the skull collides with the ship. So we'll just put um, skull collision with ship. And again, it's going to be another if statement. So if the skull dot collide wrecked and then put ship in brackets so if the skull collides with the ship then what do we want our game to do well we're not going to be losing lives yet we're just going to be losing points okay so first of all I guess we could just copy these two lines copy and paste and that means when the skull hits the ship it's just going to reset itself back at the top of the page and then Score will be score equals score minus one. That takes one off our score. So let's have a look at that. When we hit the skull, you can see us losing points. Doesn't sound quite right with it. Well, doesn't sound right because it doesn't have a sound there yet. So I reckon we need to put a little sound in there as well. So I might put that just before we reset it um, at the top of the page. So. When we do our sounds, we need to work out which sound it's going to be. So from here, it's going to be lose. That's us losing a point. So it'll be sounds.lose.play. And then open and close brackets at the end there. So that should get us losing points. Yep, as you can see, one point, And we hear that sound like we've done something wrong. That's looking good. Now, again, let's write this code better. Score equals score minus one can also be written as score minus equals one. Okay. So a collision uh, with the skull and the ship should be working just fine. I think that's all we need to do for the skull. So the next thing we're going to do is the bomb. 
So let's make another big comment that says bomb. And again, we're just going to get it falling down the screen, just like we've done with the other ones. So we'll just do move the bomb down the page, and it will be bomb.y um, equals bomb.y. How fast? We might go a little bit faster for this one. Plus five. That will get him falling down the page a bit quicker than the skull. It's a little bit harder to avoid. That worked well. I'll just fix this um, how we write that. So it should be bomb.y plus equals five. Okay, so he's falling down the page nicely. We'll reset him at the top. Reset the bomb at the top of the page. Oops. Once it hits the bottom. Okay, so resetting that bomb at the top of the page once it's at the bottom is the same as what we've done in the past with the other couple of things. So the oops, if bomb dot y is greater than six hundred, then we do skull. Ah, oh, not skull. I keep looking at the wrong thing. Bomb dot x equals random dot randint anywhere between twenty and seven eighty bomb.y will be equal to zero. So that just resets it at the top of the page. Play it to test it to make sure your bomb will hit the bottom and then go back up the top in a random location. Seems to be working fine. Uh, next thing is the collision with the ship. So bomb collision with ship. Oops. All right, so when the bomb hits the ship, we want to lose a life. We have not set up our lives yet, so let's do that now. It's very similar to the score. I'm going to have to scroll back up the top where we set up our game variables. And we're going to need to add in a lives um, variable. I'm going to set it to three. We want our game to start with three lives. Now, just like before, we cannot update our lives inside of this update function unless we make it a global variable. So what I'm going to do after global score is write global lives and that makes this variable lives a global variable which means we can now update that number while we're inside of this function okay so uh, there's the skull is the bomb down here so when the bomb collides with the ship what are we going to do so if bomb dot collide wrecked and put ship in brackets there and quotation mark we'll play a sound first of all We've got a bomb explosion here, so let's do sounds.explosion.play. That will just play the sound of an explosion. Um, then we're going to reset that bomb at the top of the page using this code here. Let's copy and paste it. Control C to copy, Control V to paste. And once it's um, reset at the top, we'll fix our lives up. So lives will equal lives minus one. So we take one off our lives variable. Let's test it and see what happens. Okay, that's looking good. We just can't see our lives at the moment, but the bomb um, explosion is working, and I will assume that this is working for the moment. We'll test it in a minute um, with an actual lives um, scoreboard on there. What I'm going to do first of all though is quickly fix how this is written. Lives equals lives minus one can be rewritten as lives minus equals one. Okay, that's a better way to write it. And let's get our lives written up on the screen like our scoreboard. So remember this line here? Copy it, highlight it, press Control C, Control V below it. It's quite a long one, so I don't need to copy and paste it all. Oh, sorry, I don't need to rewrite it all. We're going to change the word score here to lives. And the variable that we're going to have in brackets here is going to be lives. So we're going to have lives and lives. Now if we leave the coordinates the same, they're going to write over the top of each other. So let's change these coordinates to the opposite side of the screen. Let's move the x um, value to 650. Leave the y value at 10, so it's just off the top of the page, but it's going to be positioned on the right. Color's good, font name's good, font size, that's all good. Let's give it a test run. We'll see if we've got lives written in the top right hand corner, which we do. We've got three of them. Let's hit the bombs. See if we can get the counting down. Looking good. 
So it's at this point here when we get to zero lives that we need our game to end. All right, so we're going to worry about that in the next video tutorial. Okay, all I'm going to show you for now is what I've just shown you, I guess. So I've got the bomb working, got the skull working. We've just got the game over screen pretty much left to do. So I'll show you that one in the final video.